The majority of men do not leverage the the power of scent. Uh, I call them the three wheeled Ferrari. They, do you think those Jeremy Fragrance has uh, how many wheels does he have on his Ferrari? <laughs> well, the following is a conversation with Antonio Centeno from Real Men Real Style. He's been a YouTube style guru for a long time and recently has been dabbling a little bit in fragrances. So I thought it might be interesting to get him on the podcast and ask him what it's all about and what's his part of the story. So without further ado, let's get into it. Antonio, welcome on the Fragrance Podcast. Appreciate having you here. And uh, hey, hey, yeah. great to be here, Camille. Thanks for doing this on such a short notice as well. Yeah. So yeah, I've been following you. Obviously, we, we've known each other for a little while and uh, really appreciate you being a friend. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Antonio and I, we've been in touch over the last, what, like two years or something, two, three years. I, I think even longer than that. I mean, we met at a Menfluential years ago and that we was, haven't had a Menfluential for two years. So it's got to it be 2017 I'm, then or 18. Yeah. Oh man. Time flies then. It does. That was before I had my daughter too. It was. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Also great father, always good for advice. Uh, really, really good guy. <laughs> so very cool but antonio today we're here i i wanted to um i i obviously you have your huge channel real man real style and i have seen over the last couple of years that it seems to me that you've been diving a little bit more and more into fragrances would you call yourself a little bit of a fragrance enthusiast i i would say a little bit and you know we even created a whole channel so if you type in my last name but put an s in front of it on youtube you'll find the centeno channel which i don't publicly advertise. I just did it for fun. It was an experiment. And I think we've got now a couple hundred shorts and like 25,000 subs. So it's pretty interesting. We were able to build up a little uh, a little following over there. But really, for me, it was about self-education. It was, it was, I had a curiosity as I started learning more and more about fragrances. Um, you know, I know, I know, I've watched a few of your interviews and you always ask, how did you kind of get into this? And for me, it was it was happenstance, you know, I happened to be in Germany. So I reached out, I knew your brother. Um, we were talking, he gave me a bottle of Aqua Di Gio, uh, the Profumo, and really nice. I had a few bottles, but this one was on that trip. I just wore it for, you know, probably every day for a couple of weeks. And I really liked it. And that all, and I kept finding all this research. So if you watch my channel, one thing I try to do is bring in a little bit of research. I have a background in evolutionary biology. And for me, bringing in and going through the stacks, finding research that supports, backs up a lot of the things that I find in men's style, I always like to try to bring in. And I kept finding all this information about the effect of smell, fragrance mm. on your mood, on even performance. And I kept tripping over this. Moving on, I really didn't wear cologne I, I wasn't a fragrance guy at all um but the more i got into it the more i realized hey there's a functional component right. to smelling good and i started yeah, to yeah, realize there were certain fragrances i grabbed yeah it's, it's very interesting also that you mentioned it i just uh launched a, a video yesterday or the day before it's called sense with benefits and it kind of introduces the topic of aromatherapy and within that obviously there's a component that really showcases the effect of fragrance or sense in general on your brain and yeah. uh, i i assume that's what you're talking about and a i did see different you know i tried to distance myself from aromatherapy because i mm. think that there are a lot of quacks out there and yeah. that's where it, this gets a negative name you know when somebody sells, tells you oh you've got um you've got cancer go ahead and just smell this it'll fix right, it's right, like right. that's a bunch of bs now when it comes to headaches it can. I, I think the thing with fragrance and smell is it's very individualistic. So something that can help with the migraine of one person can can accelerate it or make it even worse for another. And that's where it's different. So you take an aspirin. There are certain you know parts of that medicine that's been blind tested uh, for you know close to a hundred years. We know that that is going to inhibit pain receptors on pretty much any human being. Now, people have different effects to aspirin. That's not actually talked about. Some One person could take an aspirin and be, feel no pain. I mean, they're, they're good. Other people need to take five to get the same effect, and mm. you know, they got to be careful of an overdose. So what I find is really interesting, one of the more challenging things with smell and fragrance is how 
individual this is. But for me, the, the unique insight, if there's anything that I see, is conditioning and how a person can smell something and condition themselves to feel a certain way. And we do this all mm. the time without thinking about it. Here I am drinking a cup of coffee. For, mo- yeah. for many people that drink coffee, it's the smell of the coffee that actually stimulates uh, and causes our blood vessels to actually start to restrict. Yes, nicotine initially was the reason, uh, or not nicotine, uh, caffeine, but uh, nicotine is another example. Like some people, can, they can smell the cigarette and all of a sudden they start getting some of the benefits and that, and they feel like they've got to grab it. And that's why addictions mm. can be so powerful, but also it, could you use that in a positive way? Could you actually create a smell that every time you smell it, you just feel better. You feel more confident. You feel more, you know, better about yourself. And that's that's where I'm really trying to go with it is the conditioning, not so much the, um, you know, the aromatherapy path. Right. Okay. Uh, fair point. Do you see any difference between men and women when it comes to that, how they maybe apply it or how to use products in that case? I think women are much more in tune with it than men. Again, big generalization here, but I of remember course. being in business school and a friend of mine, she was dressed really nice business school. You didn't really have to, but it was something that I'm like, oh, are, are you a little bit sick today? And she's like, yeah, how'd you know? I'm like, well, my sister does the same trick. A lot of women dress really well when they're sick because it makes them, it just makes them feel better when they're getting compliments all day that they look good. Um, so women are attuned to the power of the visual of the scent men are you know i think maybe it's our hunter gatherer background where we are just laser focused that's why we get caught staring at certain parts of you know people uh you know because we we just can't we're very direct and that that has gives us an advantage but it also can be a disadvantage because i think men um what you know what they 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 think they understand a certain part of the world and and then they they move on and and they they don't really the majority of men do not leverage the the power of scent they don't leverage a lot of other things i've talked about style and i built a whole business on men starting to leverage their image because a lot of guys just simply believe hey i'm smart i should get the job or i you know i know i have the skills i should get paid more for that but the world is really complex right. and just because you have the skills doesn't mean that you're going to get the pay raise because it turns out that you actually stink you don't pay attention to you or you don't yeah. dress properly and they're not going to put you in a customer facing position right and, and then people think, also always yeah. complain that uh you know they should do people should just accept me the way i am and all that type of stuff and i get that but it's also Sounds about beautiful. showing I, up I, right? I love that i and i want peace but the reality is if you've got a neighbor that's violent, you've got to be prepared to be able to either move or defend yourself or lock your doors. Mm-hmm. Again, you can wish all you want, but I, I think there's there is that difference between what is real and right. when you start I'm talking more the about science, the perception of one. Let's say you walk into a store, for example, right, an exp- mm-hmm. expensive shoe store, right, and you dress just in in uh, you know shorts and flip flops and all that. Obviously. Yeah, you you might be a billionaire that walks in there, but people still on the first first uh, impression, they'll have a certain impression because that's how the brain works. And there, I there was a that... 2014 study out of Harvard University, red shoe uh-huh. effect. Look it up, amazing. But what they talk about is yeah, you know, two. It, it also depends with confidence, and they look at the quality of the athletic gear because if you walk in to a really high-end boutique store and you're just wearing athletic gear, but everything you're wearing is like really high-end athletic wear and you just go in and you're perusing, like those associates oftentimes associate this with someone that doesn't need to follow the rules, is unconventional. Mm. So I guess that strongly depends where you are in the world though. It does, it does. (laughs) Germany, probably not so much. Yeah, you go, you go over to to Poland, you go over to Ukraine, you'll get get kicked out. Ukraine. I had a friend, he was in Romania and he mm. looks, he looks Roma Yeah, he's not, he's Moroccan and he actually is very wealthy. But when he was a student, you know, he would get kicked out of places because they would yell at him, no Roma, get out of here. Yeah. And straight up, and he was dressed like an American college student, didn't really think about it. Come on, college, they tell you, it matters what's in your heart, what's in your head, not how you dress. No, he learned very quickly in Romania. Uh, they'll throw you, you know, some of these shops will throw you right out. Yeah, they won't even let you in <laughs> in Russia, yeah. for example. But 
Yeah, that, and all I'm saying is, um, I do believe that it, it's a growing trend amongst men to pay a little bit more attention. And I also see it as an additional edge that you can have, whether it's a job interview or you want to make a great impression on your first date or whatever it may be, you know. So it, it's glad I'm glad to see that more and more people, uh, men specifically in the states are paying attention to that. And, I think um, that's the bigger mission that drives a lot of us is we see people that are shooting themselves in the foot and they've mm. got this great education, this great experience. Uh, I call them the three-wheeled Ferrari. They've got the enthusiasm, they've got the experience, they've got the education. But what they don't have is they don't know how to present themselves. And it's like a yeah. Ferrari going down the road with three three tires on it. And so it's sparking and it's, it's going maybe 15 right. kilometers an hour. If you put that fourth tire on all of a sudden it accelerates to 150 kilometers an hour and yeah. if guys would understand this it's just a piece it's not going to replace it's not better than but it is something that as human beings we use shortcuts yeah uh, do and, you and think those shortcuts, jeremy fragrance has uh how many wheels does he have on his ferrari <laughs> well you know he's got the enthusiasm um you know your your brother you know a uh, great guy love him but uh you know, I, I think right now he needs to find, he needs to get focused. He needs to mm. also, you know, just simply, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a few things. That's yeah. a whole other subject. So, um, but you were mentioning a uh, mission. And so I actually, um, obviously I, I wanted to talk to you about this because as far as I understand you, you floated the idea by me a couple of times you're offering, uh, is there, and correct me if I'm wrong, if it's in this right order or not, it, I see it as a self-improvement class a master yes. class in self-improvement that is has a special hook and this is fragrances the mission fragrance brand that you have they're kind of aiding you with that how does that work what's your vision for that so you know we're still and right now you know if you go over to missionfragrances.com you can learn more but the idea is to leverage the psychology of scent to perform at a higher level and it's not like you're going to be able to smell a grapefruit note and all of a sudden be performing over that that's not it what it is is that these are three unique scents with solid proven DNA, basically the crowd-pleasing fragrances. I'm not going to win any awards for unique fragrances, but we do have a four-season fragrance. We've got more of a winter, heavier fragrance, amber-based. We've got also one that's light, more bergamot. Uh, and the idea with honor, courage, and commitment is that every time you put on this fragrance, you feel more honorable, you feel maybe more courageous, you feel more committed to your goals. And what we do over a 30-day period is we teach the men how to understand the fragrance, how to condition themselves. So every time they put something on, you know, every time I put on courage, I want you to visualize a time that you were courageous. I want you, we, we walk people through the exercises. We help hold them accountable. And that that is key because the information is out there. But what we did is we took, you know, just over a hundred research articles. We created a course based on that. And we spent, you know, over a thousand hours developing the course that goes directly with our fragrances. Mm. And the, the reality is that I think anybody could condition himself to any smell because we do this all the time. Um, strangely enough, the smell of cow manure, I like it. I live in Wisconsin. And that is the sign that spring is here, that people, mm. the farmers are out planting. I live, and, and these are strange smells. Why would I, why would I like the smell of shit? I mean, it should be straight it, It's because it reminds me I know of, what you mean, of home and where I live. I understand that, yeah. And these are, and, and another big part about our course, this isn't a selling, I mean, people aren't going to buy it for this, but it's something that everyone notices. They become more aware of what is there. Mm. It's like when you go out and you buy a car, if you buy maybe a, a pickup truck and you get it in black, all of a sudden you notice, man, everybody's driving a black pickup truck because you became more aware of it. And that's right. what we work in this course, which goes over, you know, for, oh, it's like a five week course. And we break out and we really work with our students and the fragrances are a tool and we're teaching them how to use that tool. If you can imagine, mm. you know, somebody, I, I think guys go out there and they buy fragrances all the time, but they don't understand what they're buying or how to use it. So they're only getting a very small value from it, which for them usually makes them feel maybe a little bit more attractive. Their, their wife likes or their girlfriend likes it or women in general, they think are going to like it. That's just one small aspect of the power of fragrance. Yes, it can make you more attractive, but it also can make you feel better about yourself, which to me is infinitely more important about a man. The man is able to uh, just feel good about himself and feel comfortable in his own skin. It also opens you up to the world of fragrances because mm. 
you know, people, a lot of people in the fragrance world, they hate on Axe, but here's what they, have, they, don't, they don't say is they got to thank Axe because for many men, that was the, that was the, the body spray was an introduction to, wow, smelling good can actually bring me benefits. So right. they go from Axe to two years later, they're buying their first bottle of Creed Aventus. And so I'm always thankful for these things that get you in the door. And the way I mm -hmm. look at it is 80% of men in the United States do not wear fragrance on a regular basis. They wear it on special occasions. They maybe mm -hmm. have it sitting in the back of their their, uh, their their wardrobe, but they're not wearing it. And the idea is, can we help get more of that 80% to start leveraging the science of scent so that they can feel more confident, so that they can feel more honorable, more committed to their goals? Yeah. Because I love that. I mean, and I could go into all the books we in the research. Yeah, yeah. I actually, this, I'm, I'm kind of yeah. curious, actually, if I can just ask you real quick. So when you when you uh, develop a scent that's uh, supposed to make you feel more honorable, is that how how do you design that brief? Do you do some research on what certain yeah. scents uh, trigger in your brain, maybe, or how does that work? How did you approach? In, in that? general, I, so so first up, you know, there are depending on where you live and what culture you come from, different smells will have different meanings. So everyone's coming into this a bit biased. What we tried to do, and this is why we went with relatively safe, crowd-pleasing fragrances that uh, just smell really good. But at the same time, I, I just know that the majority of men are going to like these fragrances. And that was mm -hmm. the most important thing. But they also needed to be unique. They needed to be something that men would like, but maybe they, they're not conditioned to yet because we've all already conditioned uh depending on where you're at in your life and how attuned you are to fragrance and smell you're already attuned like certain smells like for me the smell of smoke just reminds me of growing up in, in our trailer home and being around my parents who smoked all the time and i hate it it's just not something i i want to so obviously we didn't go with a challenging note like that like which you find i think in noir anthracite with tom ford i went with very you know i know that let's say to be brighter to be fresher we know that bergamot is just one of those notes grapefruit as well that these are bright citruses that for the majority of people when they smell something like this they feel, feel clean they feel energized and the majority of men when they go out and buy a fragrance they're leaning towards a citrus, a clean, fresh fragrance. Um, so that was what I chose for honor. Now, you could, I, I could have switched these up in many different ways, and there's like an infinite number of combinations we could have put together. But we did make that choice to go with that one because I do, and I do find that honor is probably my most popular fragrance with the guys in the buying our set. Now, the most challenging fragrance we went with was Commitment. And this one has just a touch of oud. Uh, it's got a bit of amber in this. It's going to be, is, is it, you know, the notes imply deeper, mm. richer, heavier, woody. And this one is to be more relaxed. This is more of a winter fragrance. This is one that you would wear more in the evening. And so we set that up purposely so that it would, uh, so that what people are already associated with would work with these fragrances. And at the same time, um, I did simply look at notes and what do people associate in general with certain notes and that helped make those combinations at the same mm. time you know we, we didn't work with the master perfumer i i wish i you know could get someone like alberto maria's to uh to work but i, I realized that's not it, my guy again, he doesn't me. even care he doesn't <laughs> care about the well my guy doesn't care about the, the fragrance or the perfumer because my guy is not uh necessarily a, a fragrance junkie who mm -hmm. he is is someone that just simply wants to get a function out of his fragrance. Mm -hmm. He knows that he should really hurt someone. He should probably smell good. So again, I'm going after the guy that doesn't normally wear fragrance. And what he gotcha. just simply cares about is why would I put this on? Why would I wear it? So it's very purposeful in that regard. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. Uh, did you launch it yet? Admit, like, you guys led the way. with that timeline wise? Well, we, we launched about a year ago and I've done okay. various launches. So we've sold close to 500 um, mm -hmm. and you know, that's a hundred thousand dollars in sales. Mm -hmm. I've still got inventory. And right now I'm trying to figure out really, and we've gone back and almost all of our customers, we, every single one of our customers we've reached out to, and we've wanted, we've spoken with sometimes multiple times, trying to really understand what problem we solve, how we can improve our course, what we've done over the last couple of months, you know, we've gone back and we're re totally revamping our course making it simpler, making it easier. And it's frustrating because I want to go faster. Uh, but part of it is I'm short on manpower. So if there's anyone out there that wants to work with me on this or interested in working with me, feel feel free to reach out. Um, so I've been short on manpower. 
I only know about five businesses, and this is just a side fun project, a passion project. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'm going back and re revising this because anyone that's ever started anything in business understands that you, you've got to take a step back and you've got to really ask, am I solving the problem? Am I doing it right? Am I, am I going out there? Uh, I wanted to make sure that we were at a price point that people took this seriously. And they mm. do get three, you know, 50 mil bottles. I think our packaging, I, I think you've seen it or you've received one, I believe. Um, you know, our packaging, I, I really wanted it to be right. first class. Uh, part of the idea here with this is this sits on your dresser drawers, uh, a place where you would see it every day. Because I want people to, rem like the uh, what we have on this one, and we'll have another one coming out soon, but honor your commitments and be courageous in the face of adversity. Mm. I wanted our fragrances to stand for higher ideals. My background, I was in the Marine Corps, and if anyone was in the former United States Navy or Marine Corps, you'll notice, you probably picked it up, honor, courage, commitment. Those were our core values. Mm. And with our course, we spend an entire week talking about what are your core values? How can you build them into these fragrances? Mm. How can you actually, because I bring people, you know, people buy this because they want to perform higher. They, they want something unique. They're grabbing these fragrances because they want to get out of procrastination, start to focus more. They want to become a better man. But that last one is what I'm really concerned about because at the end of your day, or, you know, when you're on your deathbed, you're not going to be thinking, damn, I wish I would have been better at Excel. I know that pays good money being an Excel jockey on Wall Street. But what I think you're really going to think about is, did I actually, was I a good father? Was I a good husband, a good brother? Uh, was I a great son? Did I, did I live life to the fullest? And that's mm. actually the big mission and purpose of these fragrances is in our busy lives for you to take just a few minutes a day, maybe 30 seconds and sit back and say, am I doing what needs to be done today to be a more honorable man, to be a more right. courageous man, to be a more committed man. And I'd like to think that we're having a deep impact with, with our customers. And that's, uh, I think our sustaining, the reason that we keep pushing forward. Okay. If you if you wouldn't have these three categories, what other outcomes do you think guys would like to have that they might take a class on that includes a fragrance that that would sell really well? I think I so we're developing our fragrance. I've actually got the early drafts of it. Uh, this is going to be focus. Uh, we've also you know got uh, you know, so we're playing around with different angles, but I feel that in this world of distraction where we're constantly being, you know, you get five notifications in the last five minutes from your phone. Mm. The idea would be, hey, can you leverage a fragrance that you're not going to have to put caffeine into your body? You're not going to have to take some, you know, if you got ADHD, you're going to take some medication. You could actually just simply smell something and it gives you five to 15 minutes of very focused time to get started on your task. That may mm. not sound like a lot of time, but if you're familiar with James Clear or any of the other guys out there, <clears throat> behavioral scientists and writers that talk about good habits, every habit starts with a one minute, a five minute interval in which you're actually doing what needs to be done. Tiny so, steps. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, if you made a, a class on how to get laid that comes with the right fragrance, <laughs> yeah. that would be a bestseller as well. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, and, I know, I, and I've I mean, thought the, about that. Yeah, I've, we've experimented with pheromones. I've probably bought 25. Just unapologetically, different. you know. <laughs> like, Straight up, yeah. Different I, different direction, obviously, but... Uh... Yeah. The problem with pheromones is there isn't a proven human pheromone. There are right. ones that show promise. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about the pheromones... course where you actually... You know how a lot of fragrance reviewers, they talk about top 10 compliment getters or panty droppers yes. and all panty that type droppers, of stuff. Yes. But that's all BS, okay? Let's be honest. You can't just put on something and then expect the world to open up for you. There has to be a component of you it's a, doing yeah, your it's part. It's a component. It's one part. Yeah. I, I agree. You know, so that, you customer, that other though, part and then add the element of a fragrance and then boom, you have the perfect, you know, game. <laughs> I, I think, you know, I, I have four daughters. And uh, my, 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 my son, he's the oldest. And I always ask, like, if, if my kids were to see what I'm doing, would, yeah would they be proud? And, and that's one of the reasons I, I mean, you, if you would have caught me 20 years ago, I was a raunchy, 
uh, college, you know, guy in my 20s, let's just say that, like, I was notching up the numbers. I had no problem with the ladies. I loved, you know, whatever, threesomes, let, let's do it, you know. But, uh, <laughs> you know, my thing is nowadays, I, I realized that was a path that didn't lead me to happiness. Right. I, I think I woke up one day and I realized, what am I doing? And this wasn't make, wasn't fulfilling me. And, you know, that we sell that a lot of guys like think, oh, I want to be this Sigma male, alpha male, whatever it is. And that I want to, you know, I'm going to play this game with women. I'm going to have like, that's nice. I, I, I got the beautiful woman I've got. And I realized that that relationship is, and I know you've got one as well, you know, that relationship, what makes it better and taste, it, it's like wine, it ages and it gets better because of the life that we've lived together. And, and like any guy, I, I'm always tempted, you know, it's like, you know, and that's what one of the reasons I, I avoid temptation, but I also, I want to live up to these ideals because at the end of the day, I want, there's this old movie called, um, you know, Secondhand Lions. And mm -hmm. I, I love this fight scene whenever the guy, he's like grabbing this young guy and he's saying, you know, he fought, you know, two wars and he loved one woman or he like breaks out. He's like, he's ran three businesses, fought in two wars and loved one woman. And I always loved that like thing. It's like, I want, this is the life, my choice. Like, I know there are guys out there who say, oh, and tell me I'll take the hundred hot women. Good. Yeah. More no, I understand you. what you're saying. Yeah. And I agree. But for I, me, I that think... wasn't that customer is someone I don't really want to serve gotcha. because that's not where I want to be. Right. And I think that's good. Uh, you know, if I can draw a parallel to, to my little YouTube account right now, obviously I could be doing certain things that, that I know just work. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have the analytics, but I, I'm purposefully trying to do something that's a little bit more meaningful, if you can say so, uh, or at least in my eyes, it's not very like popular because people don't really think about it. Most people just go online and they search, okay, what are the top 10 fragrances for winter? Um, but if you talk about, okay, why is a fragrance successful or uh, you know, a couple of other things, aromatherapy and, and how is fragrance actually created. That takes a little bit of uh, time for people and maybe it's not the most popular thing. But I like this content and I also agree with what you said when it comes to what you leave behind. You know, the internet is forever and I do have to attest that once you become a parent, you really start thinking differently uh, about the world. And uh, so I can definitely emphasize, um, empathize with that. Yeah, um, I think you've probably seen with our channel, I've really tried to take my channel in a steady direction. I feel a few years back, we were going down a path I wasn't happy with, chasing mm. views, going after clicks, and I realized I didn't have the audience I wanted. And so now we're going towards more. We bring in a lot of the military. We talk about style history. Uh, we're making longer, deeper videos. You'll notice my thumbnails. There aren't hat usually. I mean, once once a month, I'll do a video about what women are looking for. But that's we we, we ration to like once, right. maybe twice a month. Every yeah. thumbnail is not going to have a half naked woman or something because I I didn't want you know a lot of. I guess the, the fashionable thing or what's, you know, is don't objectify women, but I think you objectify yourself as a man and you really show your, I, I think your level of thinking in you're getting down to those base components, which is part of us, but that's not who I want to be. Yeah. And I'm searching for a higher, um, I, I, I really do feel that this is an entry point to just simply men better understanding understanding themselves and uh, and being able to leverage these tools because yeah. that's what smell and fragrance is it's one tool of many to be able to put but if i can get them to leverage this maybe they can take that step in the right direction uh mm. yeah to, if i say it again in my videos but become the man they know themselves to be right right so let's talk about antonio and your future what what where do you see this going with the youtube channel uh other platforms you know, you said you have five businesses. Uh, what, what direction do you want to branch out? Well, the, the business I'm definitely excited about is uh, Mission Fragrances. But okay. it, it has been hard because of my other businesses grabbing a lot of my time. So we've really doubled down on our YouTube channel, trying to create deeper, richer content uh, that requires more research. I'm still trying to figure that out because, man, the internet will correct you. You'll make a 25-minute video, and if there's one research mistake you made the internet will let you know mm -hmm. and uh, so that's been fun and interesting but our views are up and 
I like the idea of being able to have a bigger impact and reach more people. That being said, where's the future? Uh, I'm not at this point, we're not on TikTok and I'm probably not going to go there. I do. There's a great book I just finished called The Attention Merchants. Mm -hmm. And they talk about the evolution of attention. And this goes back over 150, actually it goes back a long time ago. But uh, they really get into Paris in the like 1880s, 1890s, and they get into the First World War and the use of propaganda, the Second World War use of propaganda, uh, the rise of television or the rise of radio, then the rise of television, and then the rise of the internet or the web, and then social media as we know it now. And I do think that, I'm not sure where it's going to come after TikTok, but I do believe if it's still within social media, it's going to be even lower. Um, and I don't see this really being great for the consumer. So I think for me, what I'm trying to do is how can I create better, more meaningful content that's a vitamin, maybe disguised as candy uh, mm -hmm. to be able to. That being said, we're developing, I want to develop more products. I want to have other businesses. That's really as a creator where you can make good money. Right. Is, uh, and, and really create something that outlasts even your content. Because yeah, it, as you've seen, you know, I think you just interviewed, uh, you know, Michelle, and she's, I would argue, one of the top fragrance influencers nowadays. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and your brother used to have that, 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 that reign. But, you know, it, and this changed within a matter of just a couple of years. It used to be that in television, you know, it would take 10 years to see a shift like that. And mm. we're seeing this in 10 months. So, Things are accelerating, um, and and for me, I, what I, but what I do see is physical products uh, being able to provide solutions to problems that men have. Um, that's going to be where our future is at. So our Vitaman company, which is a grooming company, I own half of, and that's been a good project for us for the last couple of years, growing that one. Our media company, Menfluential Media, uh, that one's been steady, and I've got about fifty influencers we work with there, and that one's been nice. Um, as you know, I also run masterminds for business, uh, which I really enjoy those. They're not, it's not mm. really a business. It's something that, that we just, as you saw, we just take, we, everyone makes a donation. Uh, in this case, we were donating money to feed uh, families in Ukraine. Mm. And, uh, but I love hosting those because they're going to probably lead into a physical event. And right. I guess no, you're maybe, doing a great job yeah. for sure. You, yeah. Since you mentioned Michelle, uh, um, I wanted to ask you as well a question I asked her. Uh, well, first, two questions. Do you feel that being a, a big YouTube channel and creator with a face on it like yours, you're like yourself, is kind of like being typecast for a specific role back in the, you know, in the movie industry? Um, and the second question that leads into that, if you were to wake up tomorrow and your channel would be gone, but you would have the option to create another channel with, let's say, 500,000 subscribers off the bat, what category or what topic would that be about? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought you asked her like a different question. Uh, uh, but, a little uh, similar, but I, I, you know, refined it a little bit because you're obviously a little bit bigger. Um, the, not the punching yeah. question, if that's what you mean. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was like, uh, I, I, I was going to take that in a very different direction, but uh, but I realized I got to keep this. You can answer PG. that too if you want. <laughs> I, I could, I could. Um, so, you know, I I don't worry about being typecast. It's the web, and mm. uh, yes, I. Mo I mean, people don't really recognize me. I mean, my if anybody recognizes me, it's usually men in their 30s, 40s, or 50s that have gone through a transition, sometimes younger guys that grew up watching some of my videos. And, hey, you taught me how to tie a tie. Um, but I find that my personality maybe isn't as as lively as, you know, old, uh, old Aaron Marino, our mutual friend. And, uh, yeah, you know, so he gets, because I go, I, I hang out with Aaron a lot. So we'll be walking through Atlanta. And I'd say he gets recognized three to four times more than I ever do. But well, there was a funny story I'll share at the end of this, how one time we did both get recognized, but that was funny. Um, so what would I do if I had to start over? I definitely, so one thing I'm trying to think about is getting, you know, who do I want as my, my audience and who do I want to serve? Um, so for me, I want to mix that with curiosity as well, because what do I want to learn more about? And that's 
with that Centeno channel, what I did is I viewed this as I didn't know if I'd make any money or what I would do with this, but I figured I at least would learn a shitload more about fragrances, which I did because every single video I had to study for 10 to 15 minutes, making sure I knew what I was going to talk about. And that 10 to 15 minutes of study um, compounded over the period of a year and a half results in me learning a lot more. So two areas that I really am wanting to learn more about, one of them is crypto. I've already put in quite a bit of money to crypto and, but I do feel it's like, I just still don't know mm. much. And so a crypto channel, especially now with it being down, I feel like this is a great time to be able to get in. So that is something that you may see uh, popping up here in the next few months. And also when it comes to real estate, not necessarily buying, you know, individual properties. I like the idea of developing raw land. And then being able to create uh, spaces on that land. So a mix between commercial and, you know, kind of like where you would see these. When, and a lot of these channels become pretty popular where they put up like four to five A-frames around the small lake. Now, I like, I like that idea, but I also like the idea of creating, in a sense, a place where I could have an expandable event space. Because mm -hmm. with these masterminds I run, what I feel is missing from them is bringing all of these people together. So the idea of being able to mix a channel doing that, and actually I've been looking for land locally and I've already put in a few offers for different pieces of properties. Um, the idea is, you know, it's going to take a few years to, to build that and everything, but uh, I love the idea of creating an audience that would kind of go along with me on that journey. Mm, interesting. I would wait until next year. I'm sure there's going to be a, couple of good offers all across the board if i yeah that's it. that's <laughs> that's what speculate. i've heard as well but uh but still you know every and anyone out there in real estate probably knows this definitely better than us um i just find that it really depends on where you're at like i live in an area where there just isn't a whole lot of land that goes up for mm. sale so they're pretty insulated from right. us they didn't have as big of high of growth as they saw in a lot of other part of the countries but it seems like every time a property goes up or land goes up it's uh, getting picked up pretty quick so gotcha gotcha Awesome. Well, my final question would have been about a book re recommendation, but you actually already gave that, uh, which was Attention Merchant. Merchants. Yeah. Uh, I, I recommend that too. I checked it out. So yeah, Antonio, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I had a great talk. Hope you get, uh, had some fun as well. Check out Mission Fragrances. And uh, yeah, that's that. Thanks, man. Appreciate it and have a good weekend. Yeah, Camille, great seeing you. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.